Reg, what did you see last night? What did you expect last night? Well, two things that stand out to me. Number one, turnovers, especially for the Cavaliers. Uh, I believe they had 20 or 21. We already know how high octane uh, the Golden State Warriors offense is. They're the best scoring team in basketball. You give them extra possessions. Um, and, you know, you mentioned Kevin Durant. Um, that's a recipe for disaster. And mind you, they did all of this with probably their third best scorer who has struggled throughout this postseason, Clay Thompson, shooting three of 16. You cannot turn the basketball over, give them extra possession, be outshot, and think you're going to win. Number two, easy point. It was like a layup yeah. drill, especially for Kevin Durant in that first half. Dunk after dunk, if you're going to give – no, number one, if you're going to give them extra possessions, turnovers, and you're going to give them points in the paint, which they dominated, there's no way you can beat the Golden State Warriors. It's, I don't know what the answer is if you're Coach Ty Lu, but number one, defensively, to me, you've got to pick up full and you've got to keep them out of the paint. And that's easier said than done because when you watch the Warriors play, everyone's always running to the three-point line because they're such great three-point shooters. Well, that opens it up for Draymond Green, Kevin Durant, who, number one, not only had 38 points, but the assist because he's such a great driver. Those two things stood out to me the most in game one. All right. What are the changes that Cleveland has? Well, look, uh, to me, LeBron played great in that first half, along with Kyrie. You've got to get better offensive contributions. But to me, it's all going to start with better effort at the defensive end. And to me, that lies on... Uh, Kevin Love, you can't let Pachulia get offensive rebounds. And Shumpert and J.R. Smith have to do a better job um, at limiting um, KD and, uh, Le- uh, excuse me, KD and uh, Steph Curry. But once again, Clay Thompson, who has not played well this postseason, at some point in time is going to find his stroke. It's safe to say that. He was 3 of 16 last night and had wide open looks. So to me, you've got to have better effort. There's not a lot of X's and O's. It all comes down to heart and effort. What do you do with Clay Thompson? What would you say it, to him? Just play your game, shoot or shoot. I mean, I'm surprised that this, uh, if you want to call it a slump, has gone on this long. What I've loved about him, it hasn't affected him at the other end. Yeah. Because he's doing a great job defensively, and he's one of the better two-way players uh, in the game, um, but shoot or shoot, and that's my whole point. Is at some point in time, he's going to have one of those games like when he had 61 on 11 dribbles. It's not that he'll have 61 in the finals, but he's going to have one of those breakout games where everything's going to seem to be going, and that's their third best scorer on this team. So, I mean, it's a, it's a challenge for the Cavaliers. Um, you know, before the series, I had the Cavs. Winning this in six, Mm. they're going to have to start. Yeah, I I just thought what I saw when we covered them in the Eastern Conference Finals, to me, they still have the best player on the floor in LeBron James. Now, it didn't really kind of manifest itself in game one because that was Kevin Durant, um, but they still have the best player, and they have the best in-the-paint closer in Kyrie Irving, but they're going to have to get more contributions from Kevin Love and J.R. Smith and other guys to chip in. Durant said it was going to be a basketball decision as to why he was, if he was leaving and where he was going. Does this validate the basketball decision part of this, that he was going to a system that catered to him where you can't cover him, um, you, you know, you can't double team him, that there's ball movement, he gets open looks, he can beat you inside, outside? In 10, 15, 20, 25 years, uh, will we look back and say, you know, he left. OKC to go to Golden State Warriors and win three, four, five championships because the way they are built now, Bob Myers and Steve Kerr, Mike Brown, and that brain trust in the Warriors, I mean, they're built to go to the finals easily, what, the next five to seven years. So when we look back in 10, 15, 20 years, we're not going to talk about him defecting and going there. We're going to talk about his championships. And bottom line, at the end of the day, That's all the media and the fans, that's what they talk about. Well, did he win a championship? At the end of the day, Kevin Durant is going to win multiple championships, and that's 
basically all what we should be focusing on. Personally, I'm disappointed because it's a small market that took a hit, but all fans talk about, all media talk about is championships. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he's going to win his championships, so I pat him on the bat for that. Personally, I don't like it, but it's about championships. If you could change your prediction, would you change it? I hate doing that. I'm going to write it out. Um, and you I'm should. Gonna... It's only I tell people it's only one game. Right. I, I've seen it's, games it's, where it's the most meaningless game. Not meaningless game because it's always important to win your games. But it's only game one. If you ask me this after game three or four, uh, that's a different story. But there's plenty of time. Remember, they lost by 15 last year, 33 in game two, and still won the series. Right. Mm-hmm. So there's still you know room for the Cavaliers to get going. But they've got to play better and have better effort. They have to have multiple closeout and plays. You have to make multiple efforts defensively if you're ever going to have a chance to be Golden State. You, you, you almost have to be perfect, and they're going to have to be perfect for six to seven games. Reggie Miller joining us, NBA on TNT Hall of Famer. All right, a couple of quick questions here. You can have Kyrie or you can have Steph Curry. If I'm an owner, you're and... starting. You're starting your team right now at their ages. So you got you, you got Kyrie and you got Steph oh Curry. My God. You got you got him for the next five years. You can have Kyrie or Steph Curry. Who you got? That is so difficult because you cannot go wrong with either or. But if I'm an owner and I'm thinking about marketing and all that. Probably Steph, because I'm looking at the big picture. I'm looking at dollars. If I'm a general manager, president, closing the game, I'm going with Kyrie because he's a closer. He's a bona fide closer. Does that kind of answer? I know I'm hedging, but Kyrie is a – man, that dude is a killer. But if you're talking about marketing, I mean, a guy's a two-time MVP. Kyrie – uh, That's so tough. I'm Kyrie gonna, is a, Kyrie's a killer, man. I, I'm going to take Kyrie, even though I, I think Steph is a better player right now, but I would take Kyrie because he's 25 and he's grown up since LeBron got there. Um, but I would take Kyrie because he's 25 and Steph is, what, 29. And if I'm going to have him for the next five years, I want 25 to 30, not That's 29 okay. to 34. So I, I, enough. I, I would take Fair enough. All right. Uh, the, one and, the one and done rule, the commissioner opened it up. Uh, he was on uh, Fox Sports Radio, and he, and he talked about, you know, c- can we do something here? Do we make it two years in college? Do we let him come out of high school? If I, fu- if I put this to a vote of players in the NBA right now, what is the ideal situation for the one and done? What do you think that they would come up with? Well, number one, let me ask you a question. Uh, when can a young man or woman sign up? to join the armed forces at 18? 18. If you're old enough to do that, you should be old enough to go into the NBA. And I'm fine now, with that. I am fine I'm, right there with I you. am fine with that, too. Here's, here's a couple things. All right. I just don't understand why they cannot adopt what Major League Baseball does with their, their system. If you think you're bold enough and your parents think you're good enough and you personally think you're good enough to go pro and you sign out of high school – then so be it. You'll be in the farm system, whatever. Eventually you'll make it to the major leagues. But if you don't and you go to college, they have you for what, like three years, right? In, in the NFL, yes. It, no, oh, in the NFL, correct. But don't they have that in baseball too? Uh, baseball is three years too, yes. Yes, in baseball too. Why can't we adopt that, which the NFL and Major League Baseball does? And if you, know, you go to whatever college – and you ball out and you think you can leave, you get penalized. Like, you can't be drafted for another two more years. So that makes it five years. Well, I don't understand why the NBA cannot adopt that rule. I'm all for kids coming out at 18. If they think they're good enough and they want to risk and gamble it, great. But if they don't think they can make it and they need some seasoning at the collegiate level, if you sign to go to Georgetown, UCLA, Dayton, uh, Columbia, Harvard, whatever, and you think you got you got to be there for three years. I don't understand why the NBA can't do that. I would like for 
I, I would like for everybody to look at the NBA the way you look at the other sports. It's it's we allow this to happen in tennis or golf yeah. and hockey yeah. and baseball. Yeah. If you're yeah. good enough and you're going to take the chance, fine. I, I I'm amazed that how much we invest in these 18 year olds that. You know, we, we're trying to protect them from what's going to happen if they don't make it in the NBA. We don't care about that. We want to protect the NBA, and we want to protect college basketball. So this is selfish on the fans' part, not thinking about what the kid, what's best for the kid, or the fact that that's what they want to major in. That's what their future is. If it doesn't work out, so what? You know, that happens to everybody in all walks of life. And the key word you're just saying there is... It, gamble and take a chance. If you're 18 years old and you want to take that chance, yeah. you should have every single right to be able to say, you know what, I want, I want to test it at the highest level. But if you're on the fringe and you kind of know that you're not going to be uh, a lottery round player or a first rounder and you need that seasoning at the collegiate level and you end up wanting to go to you know, USC or Pepperdine, you've got to be there for two or three years. Yeah, I you like two years. There. I like two years because it forces you to go to college. It, it, it forces you to be doing something that, hey, you might even enjoy this. And, and, it, it, and it doesn't make, uh, you know, professors and, uh, you know, presidents look foolish when it comes to uh, college and, and actually what college is supposed to be. And really, right now, are these kids, what, they go for what, four months? Yeah. Five months, six months? Yep. Come on. Yep. I mean, it's, it's like a joke. Uh, he's Reggie Aloysius Miller, the Hall of Famer. Reg, thank you. Theodore, you're always the best. I love my Danettes. They are always spitting fire. Really? Yes, they are. And by the way, yeah. I'm with you. I would not even pick up a donut. Are you kidding me? That stays right at the bottom of your gut. Do I'm, you, disappointed. Do, I'm disappointed in my Danettes because looking at a few of them, they need to be on a treadmill wow. instead of eating donuts. Wow. What, what is your bad food? Because you're in incredible oh, shape. Hot fudge sundaes. Oh, they drive me crazy. Chocolate. Anything chocolate is my Achilles heel. Seriously. Oh, but give me a brownie sundae. It's hard for me to turn it down. <laughs> it is, brownie sundaes drive me crazy. Yes, Paulie. Michael Jordan let himself go a little bit working out for him. We're following that train. Like Reggie's too in shape. You can't be. You can never be too in shape. You don't eat what you love sometimes. Donuts, they sit at the bottom of your belly. It's, it's hard to get out. Eventually, they'll come out, but it's like two or three days later. <laughs> All righty. Thank you, Reg. <laughs> Appreciate it, gentlemen. That's Reggie Aloysius Miller, Jr., the third. The Dan Patrick Show, weekday mornings on Audience.